Well, celebrations for Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month have been taking on a new meaning in recent years. The month of May is designated as a time to honor the influence and achievements of Asian and Pacific Islander Americans. But those in the community say they're still fighting for visibility and representation and report harboring safety concerns due to anti-Asian sentiment that surged during the pandemic and resulted in increased hate crimes and targeted attacks. For more context, I'm joined by Ching Guo, an advocate for Make Us Visible NJ and past president of the Asian Pacific American Lawyers Association of New Jersey. So, Ching, let me ask you first, because I have spoken with a number of Asian American organizations where folks say they have a complicated relationship with this month, with celebrating AAPI. Talk to me about what it means to you. So, I'm glad that it's being celebrated because it's bringing about this awareness that is not talked about uh, you know, any other days of the year, but at the same time, people, you know, I'm sure with any other month where there's a whole, you know, Women's History Month, women should be celebrated every, you know, every other month of the year. So it feels like we're pigeonholing, but at the same time, I'm glad, I am glad to see the celebrations because at least people are utilizing those days because everyone's so busy to compliment Asian Americans, what it means to bring about the history right. and to learn about it. So I say, you know, one month out of the year is better than none. What would you like to see come about from having a designated month, which is, you know, pretty much what we have right now? No, I'm glad you're bringing that up, Brianna, because uh, last year was the first time that the Governor Murphy signed into bill, into law, that requires AAPI history to be taught in K through 12. And New Jersey is the only, the second state in the nation after Illinois to have such a requirement. So even there, the struggle, you know, continues. And we think about New York and California with a right. larger AAPI population. So in terms of, yes, there is such a rich history. There's, you know, there's East Asians who are different from South Asians, which, you know, encompasses India, Pakistan. Right. The, you know, everyone looks different ethnically, culturally. There are socioeconomic differences across the, you know, the board. So the disparities, even you know, within yeah. within one country and within one group, is is so diverse. So it, it is very difficult to teach AAPI history and heritage it, because it's not a monologue. Right. Yeah. Um, well, talk to me about some of the challenges that that still persist. It was a tough couple of years during COVID. Coming out of COVID, we saw a surge in anti-Asian hate crimes. Um, and I'm wondering if there are still concerns uh, about security and safety within the communities. No, there absolutely are, you know, in just from my personal perspective. I remember I live, uh, I live in Secaucus, so I'm, I usually take the bus. But then, you know, during the pandemic, I actually took a pause, which I never did. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't feel safe taking public transportation as an Asian, um, not even just as a female, but as an Asian. And I'm sure, you know, that's felt across the board and I'm not the only one. So where would you like to see these conversations go um, and sort of to help people, you know, come out of that mentality and not treating these cultures as a monolith, like you said? I think there absolutely needs, you know, education is step number one where, you know, kids are taught from a young age what it means and that there's cultural diversity. So I think there's strength in that. And then in addition, you know, there needs to be a recognition on the, uh, the political side and also in the criminal justice system. New Jersey in 247 years have never had an Asian American on the New Jersey Supreme Court. So that, you know, that's something that needs to be remedied. And we have, you know, able and ready candidates. Yeah, a lot of work to be done for sure. Um, Ching Guo, thank you so much for coming in and for talking to me about this. Absolutely. And you know, thank you for having me. This is so important. Yeah, thank you.